Ooh, welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 326, 12 Angry Men. My name is Eric. And I am Jason. And now here's the other 10. Wow, wow, wow. No, it's just two angry men. Yep. Tonight. <laughs> I bet one of us is a little more angry than the other. <laughs> it's, I'm guessing you're the angry one. It's probably the reasonable so, assumption. Yeah, yeah. I feel pretty chill. I've got a couple beers in me. And... I'm on fine. Yeah. I, I, had a, I had a cat sit on my lap for like two hours. Isn't that awesome? It's pretty great. Like, isn't that great therapy for anyone, you think? Pretty much. Yeah. Like they say, it's a stress reliever just to, just to pet a cat. It was pretty fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when he eventually got up, like, I was like, oh man, at least I can like move and stretch a little right. bit. Because I'm spending the entire time trying, like, I don't want to disturb him. Right? Yeah. yeah. He's the lord of your situation. Yeah. They should have had a dozen cats in this movie, and there would have been no angry men. None at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then again, probably wouldn't have been much of a movie. Though, right? Yeah. Just, I don't just know. Watching 12 guys pet cats. Are, are you trying to say you people wouldn't watch videos of people just doing weird stuff with cats? Because... Ah. I think I think the internet proves you wrong. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Certainly, I'm sure cat videos are watched more often than black and white movies these days. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Uh, oh yeah. I, I wanted. I was like looking to see what year this was from, and it says 1957. Color. 96 minutes. That's what huh. it says on the back. Really. It's not a color. No, no, it's not. Like, there's no color. No. Gray is not a color, right? Not not in the context we're talking about. I mean, about. the cover has a color cover. It does. Yeah. Um, but that's a, it's a, you know, it's not a photo of anyone in the movie. Nope. It's, nope. It's a drawing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Was there like a, uh, like a color version that you just didn't select when you, you hit play? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, huh, yeah, I'm curious. It really just said at the very bottom of the, the disc on the back. Huh. And it's clearly black and white. Right. Like, I, I mean, it's not like Rumblefish where there's like, you know, an artistically done color add-on or something. Right, right. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. That's, that is weird. Yeah. It does say that. Maybe they just didn't have enough room to write black and white. Because it's a small oh, little box there. I, I, I think black and white could have fit there. I mean, there's like ten more letters in that phrase. Right, but, but I mean, it, it would have fit. I mean, so that, so that, if not, you know, you, there, there's a lot of extra space in some of these other boxes. Right. And, I mean, graphic design is just all about problem solving. And it, it's true. So it, they could have made it work. Right. <laughs> and I'm sure that, you know, they probably have a template. Well, it's oh, like, yeah, you know, for black and white, for color. Mm -hmm. Here. Maybe they just, yeah. Yeah. Just got it wrong. Got the wrong one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then again, well, hey, the, the disc is in color. Though. There is a, a color photo of Henry Fonda on the actual yeah. disc. Yeah. That's, that's a little weird. That's weird. Uh, and it looks like it's from that film. Yeah. Yeah. But it also looks, like, super colorized. Maybe that's what they're saying. They, the disc is in color. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the film on it. Black and white. Yeah. Right. So that is our review of 12 Angry Men. Good night. <laughs> I hope you learned, gleaned a lot. Uh, we're smart. I don't believe we are. <laughs> I'm, I think we're a hung jury on that one. Oh, okay. Um, you know what's weird about this movie? Is I didn't think I'd ever seen this before. But I had. I had seen about 40, 50% of it at least. Really? And I'd seen like the last 40 or 50% of it. Right, right. <clears throat> but I had no idea what I'd watched because I, I, it was on TV one night when I was flipping through channels. Like I think it was one of those things where I was at someone's house, like for some weird reason, staying the night somewhere. And, uh, and I was just, I was like, they have cable. Yeah. Right. And I was flipping through the channels and I was like, this <clears throat> movie looks interesting. And I watched the rest of it. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and I just, like I may not have seen the very, very tail end of it, but right. I, I saw like a huge chunk of it. And until we sat down to watch it, I had no idea that I'd ever seen part of this before. That's interesting. I mean, I, I guess it's it's probably like a staple on like Turner Classic right. movies. I'm That's sure. probably where it yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, 
I had uh, never actually seen the movie. I think I mentioned that last week uh, when you you picked this. Uh, but I had read the play in either junior high or high school in one of my classes. So, like, I was pretty familiar with it. Sure. All the way through. Right. right. Yeah. Even though I'd never actually seen it acted out other than by, you know, high a school. bunch of 14-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're telling me that... They weren't as good as Jack Klugman and Henry Fonda. Not as. Right? Not as. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a bunch of dudes with acting pants in this movie. That was impressive. <laughs> it was indeed. Um, for being a movie who that's 99% shot in one room. One room. It's only pretty much those 12 guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, there's like one other extra that occasionally hands them something. Right. That's there's it. a judge at the beginning. Yeah. And, and he was like, great. He was so bored. He, he was, had, oh, he was man, like, I'm glad you mentioned that. He had his coffee pot. Yep. He was trying to stay awake. Yep. Like, that could have been so overdone. Right. But they just subtly just showed how bored he is with murder cases. Right. <laughs> like, even ki- even children murder cases. He's right, like, right. whatever, seen it. <laughs> Yeah, that was. I'm glad you mentioned that because that definitely stood out to me. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, uh, so this is a good movie. I loved it. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Uh, like even though, like you know, you know, pretty much, even if you had never seen it before or read the play or anything like that, I'm pretty sure you could figure out what's yeah. going to happen by the end. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's not about that. It's about watching those guys oh, yeah. do what they do. Right. And, and, and like just letting that high caliber writing unfold. Oh, I mean, yeah. The writing is so good. Like the dialogue is so good. Yep. And then just the, like the actual murder plot that they're, it, it, it's a 12 man jury and they're, um, you know, it's, they're, uh, deliberating. Deli- yes. Is that the word? Huh? On, uh, on the innocence or guilt of the young man, like this child, I guess they're trying as an adult. He's 18. Okay. So they're, yeah, he's on trial for the murder of his father. Yep. And, uh, the entire movie is the jury deliberating. Yep. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this. So it's, it's basically 11 of the jurors all think he's guilty. One, uh, has some doubt. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much that one guy through the rest of the movie trying to convince Everyone to at least, you know, think about the fact that maybe there's a chance that the kid didn't do it. Right. And does his best to go over the evidence and, and convince them. And there are people who, you know, just feel like the lawyers did their jobs, presented all the evidence the best that they could, and, and it all leads to him being guilty. There are people who are just prejudiced. Sure. Uh, because I don't think they ever specifically say, like, what race the kid is supposed right. to be. Yeah. But apparently he's not. He's not white. Yeah. yeah. Although he looked white when they showed, like, I, a glimpse of him. Uh, yeah, he might have been, like, maybe Jewish or. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, I was going to say either Jewish or part, perhaps even, like, Hispanic. Hispanic. Yeah. yeah. You just see, like, one quick, like, shot of him yeah. at the beginning. Uh, but yeah, there, there are people who just, you know, well, he's. You know, that ethnicity, and you know, they're all scum. Right. And then there's people who are like, well, I just want to get out of here, so yeah. I'm just going to vote how everybody else does. I want to go to the game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or one guy, um, Jack Warden. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, everybody was so good in this movie. <laughs> Every single one of them, all 12 of those guys were oh, so yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know much else to say, really. Have you ever been on a, on a jury? I have not. Have no. you? Yeah, I did once. Really? Um, it was like 10 years ago, and I got summoned for a jury, and it was a case about um, this lady was suing her husband because he supposedly um, tried to kill her or whatever. He, like, you know, did these threatening remarks, and, and they had some of it on... Um, on on the phone where the the kid the son like called nine one one, and uh, he's like trying to break in the house and all all this. But um, 
we unanimously voted him not guilty because, um, there was, I mean, like, you know, it was, it was chaotic and crazy. And like, I'm sure he was an asshole. I'm sure he has no, uh, right to be in their <coughs> lives. Right. But there was no, like, there was zero evidence that he was, you know, like attempted murder or anything. So right. we all were just like, nope, I'm sorry. He, terrible decision with, you know, mar- partnering up with him, but I right, uh, right. can't prove that he was trying to kill you with, with the evidence presented. So it was really interesting because like I had never seen this movie, but um, looking back, I felt exactly like Henry Fonda when I walked in, I was like, Oh my gosh, all these people are going to, it's like, I'm going to be the one person that says they're not, isn't, you know, there's, right. a, there's reasonable doubt. And, uh, but they were all like, everybody in that room was a Henry Fonda. They were all like, well, that's good. They're like, hey, I mean, it could have been, but there's no proof that he, you know, right. so, so I was like, I was impressed actually. Cause I, I figured, um, people were, would behave like this, you know, like, well, you know how white trash people are and you know how, you know, right. Right. And, and luckily it didn't happen. So, so, uh, I read in the paper a year later, he did kill her. That's kind of what I was about to ask. <laughs> no, 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 I never, I never did follow up on okay. it. I'm sure they're not happily married though. Yeah, let's hope not. Uh, let's hope he, he didn't uh, actually hurt anyone. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. certainly hope not. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? But, you know, that's one of those things about, you know, the, the, just the jury process is that, you know, you're only there to hear about the case that you're there for. for sure. And there has to be the evidence that yeah. he is guilty. Right. You know, whether he is a turd or not. You right. know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be great if the judicial system was actually called turd or not? <laughs> and like a giant screen, <laughs> like you're just waiting, like for your sentencing and then all of a sudden a light, a lighted screen with like a neon turd either lights up or doesn't. <laughs> That's how your fate is decided. That'd be great. So, uh, did you go to jury duty and like, you know, your cargo shorts and your dystopia <laughs> t-shirt? Uh, uh, I had my dystopia underwear on, but, but I figured, um, actually I remember I brought a book with me. I was reading Charlie Chaplin's autobiography at the time. And I remember this specifically because as I was like putting all my stuff in the metal detector in the, the lobby, it went through and like, I had to put my book in there too. Yeah. And the security guard was like, Oh, I read that Charlie Chaplin autobiography. He's like, that's great. <laughs> and I just remember that stood out. I was like, I would never have expected that to happen. That's awesome. Like, you know, like there's me profiling the uh, yeah. security, the, you know, the security guy with his wand. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, well, have, but, you, uh, have you ever been on trial? Uh, I'm not allowed to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I have not. I have. Really? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Not a jury case though. Yeah, okay. But, but just in front of a judge. And, wow. uh, I think there was someone else there that, like, he consulted with, but, like, I had to have a lawyer. And, uh, there, there was testimony and, and, uh, had to get up on the stand. And wow. Then, uh, can, I mean, can you go into, uh, what that was about? Sure. Or? It's nothing big. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, I was an idiot. Is pretty much what it boils down you to. You can get on trial for that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I've been lucky all these years. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, uh, it's kind of a complicated process to get to the point where I was on trial, but basically it, it all boils down to just driving, uh, without a, uh, without insurance. Okay. Basically I was pulled over once, uh, and I was pulled over because, uh, one of my headlights was out. And I did not have insurance, so I got a ticket. And I was not wearing my seatbelt, so I got a ticket. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and because of that, then I got a suspended license. Uh, I think it was suspended for six months. Uh, and then I got caught driving on a suspended license oh. with no insurance. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, I got pulled over that time because somebody had hit me, and my license plate had fallen off. Uh, and so I put my license plate like in my front window and apparently that's a no-no in Ohio. I must be in the back window. <laughs> well, no, because <laughs> I had a back license plate. Oh, okay. You're supposed to have... Oh, I, I, thought thought all, I thought all you had to have was the back. Have to have both. Wow, I know. Ohio law. Hmm. Yep. Uh, so I got pulled over for that and then got caught. Suspended license, no driving. So I had to, uh... Uh, I couldn't just, uh, go to court and plead not guilty this time. I had to 
uh, go to courts and uh, get a lawyer. Wow. And uh, it was an ordeal. I bet. And uh, yeah, I had to, had to testify and then uh, I got my license suspended again for like a year. Uh, Did you drive that year? Huh? Did you drive that year? Well, <laughs> the uh, entire process got kind of thrown out at a point. Okay. Uh, because I had to, because on a suspended license, like if you apply for it, you can get permission to drive to work. Okay. Right. So I was going through that process and I had to go to the DMV to get like a special form or whatever. And the DMV office that I went to told me that I had to call like the Columbus, you know, the main bureau. Sure. So I called them and I'm on the phone with them and I tell them about the case and they're like looking up all my information and they're trying to figure out what to do. And finally the woman comes back on the phone and she said, so, okay, so back in April when you first got pulled over and you got that suspended license or you know, your license suspended for that time, I was like, yeah. She's like, well, you were pulled over for not having a seatbelt or you were ticketed for not having a seatbelt. I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, well, the officers shouldn't have asked for your insurance information. So you shouldn't have gotten a suspended license for that. And so like everything else that happened after that didn't count anymore. Really? Yep. It's like they went to the photo replay. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I just got my wow, license back. That's and, crazy. Yep. So if you had had like <laughs> six underage dead hookers in your trunk, would they have just like let that go to? Probably not. No, I think that would have been more of a, a thing <laughs> because they were underage. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's good. At least. Wow. But yeah. So my girlfriend at the time had to like drive me around, and she drove me to court, and she had to drive me to the uh, with the hookers in the trunk. With the hookers in the trunk, and we had to go to the lawyer's office to see if I qualified for being having a, a public defender. Wow. Uh, yeah. That was, yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, it was, it was fine. And then, yeah, the, uh, the day, <laughs> the day that we went to the public defender's office and he was like, okay, yeah, you qualify and I'll defend you and, you know, whatever. So that same day, uh, she, we were driving around and she was like, I, I don't feel good. And she drove to urgent care. And uh, her appendix was bursting. Oh, wow. And had to be rushed to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea that you had so much drama and like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was about 10 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Man. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's most of my court experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got another, like, summons, like, a couple years after that uh, original one, and they... Like I had to call and they, you know, they had dismissed it by then. But, yeah. You know, cause you, you know, you call and right. they tell you whether or not you have to show up. So luckily I haven't been back because I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I know it's like part of our democratic right. uh, society, but, um, you know, you have to take a day off work and, and they pay you like three dollars or right. something, which covers, you know, your, which parking. apparently in 1957, that's what they were paying them too. Oh yeah. That's what they paid me in the 08 or right. whatever too. So it didn't really go up that much. Nope. It seems a little unfair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, truthfully, I was, I was pretty happy to be there. Like I was like, at that time, just pretty bored with working at Mavericks. Sure. <clears throat> but, uh, I would much rather be at Mavericks now than mostly just because I don't like to ride elevators and you have to ride an elevator uh, to go yeah, to the courthouse. Right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's like the huge, the biggest thing. <laughs> and they always raise an eyebrow. Like if I go to a hospital or a, government office and ask where the stairwell is, right. they always raise an eyebrow. Like, <laughs> like I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. It might be my ISIS face tattoos. It's probably. But, yeah. but I mean, they should. But that's the band. It's a great, they're a great band. I thought it was the comic character. Like, the DC comic. Yeah. 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 I like all three. I mean, I mean, the, those latter two. <laughs> Shit. Um, who knew I was listening? But no, yeah, they always like are really weirded out. They're like, "Well, you can't use the stairs going up, but you can going down, and, like stuff like that." Uh, what? 
Because it's like a fire emergency. Like, you, you know, they can't say you can't go down the stairs because of, like, you know, fire emergencies or whatever. But sometimes they won't let you go from the first. They're like, you can ride the elevator up to the second floor and then you can take the stairs up after that. But you can't enter the stairwell on the first floor. They've told me that before. <laughs> it's stairs. Like, what? Right. <laughs> it's like a security thing that they don't want people just roaming around not in a box. You know. What? Right? That's exactly my reaction. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm not definitely afraid of elevators or anything, but, you know. What? It's Elevators have got to be my least favorite thing that I... Like... Uh, I'm aware of this, like, but... Like if, like if, like, Krakens existed, maybe that would be right. my least favorite thing, but my least favorite thing that, like, probably actually exists in our reality that's man-made... Right. Uh, <laughs> ...is elevators. Yeah, but, I mean... It's it's stairs. Yeah, I think they're just afraid. Like one of them was when I uh, I went to visit my friend that had quintuplets okay. like a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I went to the hospital to visit, and I tried to go up the stairs. I was like, you know, I was like, how do I get to you know the the NICU? And uh, they were like, yeah, do you go up this elevator. I was like, can I avoid the elevators at all? And they're like, they looked at me like I just asked if like I could <laughs> rummage through all the secret files in the hospital. <laughs> I was like, really? I just, I just do not. Enjoy. I mean, I've ridden elevators. Right. I'm, I'm sure I've ridden a dozen this year, you know, and I hate it every time. I hate it, but I'll do it if I have to. Um, it's just so weird that they would react like that. I don't get it. Yeah, they, yeah, they, and it's not just like I had this experience at one place. It's like right, right. every everywhere. They want you to use their elevator. They don't want you to use their stairs. They think I'm just gonna like start a brothel and a drug den in the stairwell. Yeah, that's so weird. We are barely talking about this movie. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's really, I mean, okay, it, there's, there's, not, there's not much to, to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like you know, it's two hours of, uh, or it's not even two hours. I think it's yeah, it's, but it's, it's pretty close. close. But, yeah. but they, have, it's like, yeah, it's. A, I mean, it sounds like it might be boring, but it's a two-hour movie set in one room, yeah. with just twelve. There's not even any ladies to look at. Nope. You know. Um, there's no cars nope. to look at. Nope. You know, it's like it's it's not you know traditionally exciting. No, but it is. It's so like I was riveted. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the, I mean, because you feel you feel like all these guys' emotions. They all have like a particular perspective, and their emotion uh, is on their sleeves. Yeah, and, and it's and, and everybody gets a moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, at least one moment. Everybody sure. has has their their time. You know, to to be like a uh, Someone like the that focus. You, yeah. And it's intense. Yeah. And so well written though. Like the dialogue is so good. Like yeah. this is the kind of movie you gotta figure like people like Brian Michael Bendis and Quentin Tarantino oh, I'm like, sure have to appreciate the dialogue and oh, yeah. David Mamet, people that are like dialogue um you know, known for their dialogue. Absolutely. Because, yeah, without that, you know Yeah, you would the have best acting in the world, right. you know. You wouldn't have much of a movie if it was 12 guys saying uninteresting things <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> yeah. And they change the set once or twice. Like there's, um, like they go, they, there's a restroom scene basically oh, yeah. where they, there's a men's room scene for a while. That disgusts me. <laughs> you know what disgusts me is like those old paper towel racks. That's primarily what I'm talking about. I hate those because, okay. I mean, you know, okay, you know, there's like the hot air dryer is my favorite. For sure. And then there's like the paper towel rack. I don't really like that because the hippie in me. Right. But the worst is that like linen circular oh my God. revolving towel rack. Nope. I've seen that. I've had to use oh, that. So have I. Yeah. My elementary school had those. Oh. We're, okay. If you, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's like there's like a box on the wall with yep. like a, basically a, a U shaped loop. loop hanging out of it. Uh, one side is clean. Yep. <laughs> the other side is dirty. Yep. And you gotta roll it through and, and hopefully in, find a clean spot. And in your mind, like, is it supposed to, like, is it, does it, is the idea that it, like, <laughs> is wrapped around another cylinder in there as it gets dirty and the dirty side never comes back around? I don't know. Like, I think that would have to be the idea. Yeah, I guess. But in my mind, it's like, there's gotta be, like, a knockoff version of that. Oh, it's like, yeah. well, you know, it's a little cheaper. <laughs> it just rolls right back around. It's it's nasty. Yeah, that's it, so, it's the worst. It's horrible. Yeah, and he like wipes his head with that. Yeah, thing. yeah, he yeah. did. Of course, admittedly, like you know, because he goes to one where like he tries to tug it down and like it doesn't 
budge, right. and he won't use that. He won't use it. He's he goes right. to the other right. one, which yeah. does move. But still, the entire idea of it is awful. It's awful. <laughs> the, uh, the last comic convention I went to uh, was in uh, Cincinnati at the uh, convention center. Okay. And the, the bathroom there had the hand, the, the blower. Oh, yeah. But it was a fancy high-tech one. Where it was like, this. oh, you actually stick your hands inside of it. Stick that, your hands. Yeah. There's like two holes. Yeah, I've seen those at a couple of hotels. And yeah, things. yeah, those are nice. Mm-hmm. Pretty neat. It's like a, it's like your hands are going on a little amusement park ride. Right? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> is that the was that the one with the Duke Electric? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, man, this movie is so good. Uh, and then, like I said, it doesn't even matter whether you know how it's going to end or not because it's just all about the performances. Oh, yeah, yeah. the build-up. Yeah. The, I mean, it's not like there's a twist, really, or like... Nope. It's just it's just done so well. Yep. It is it's just perfect classic filmmaking. I, I mean, there's some, some weird stuff here and there, like uh, whenever they talk to the, the one juror, the, the really old man. Right. Where, like, for whatever reason, just whenever they... they Focus on him. It's like a super close up. Yeah, you can see like the little hairs on his ears. Right, and, and he's like making weird faces. <laughs> it's <is> bizarre. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Though. Yeah, oh yeah, he's good. Uh, yeah, you know J- uh, Jack Klugman is great. In oh yeah, he was uh, awesome. Henry Fonda is, is fantastic. I don't know if I've ever actually seen him in anything else. I was thinking the same thing earlier. I was like, I know Henry Fonda, but right. I don't know that I've watched other movies with him. Like I've seen Peter Fonda movies. Sure, and Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. I've seen a Jane Fonda movie at least. Yeah. Part of it. Which one? Barbarella. Oh, oh yeah, that was her. Yeah. Only part of it. Because it's fucking awful. Is it? I've, it's I've, terrible. I've, I've always kind of wanted to see it. <clears throat> Joe G and I, uh, back when I was, uh, you know, having a nervous breakdown, mm-hmm. uh, and then we weren't doing the Viewmasters at the time, you know, he would still come over and we'd just hang out and watch whatever. So one day we decided, oh, let's watch Barbarella. You know, it's stupid, probably, and probably fun. And right. Got about 40 minutes into it, and maybe not even that. <laughs> it's just like, man, this is just terrible. This is not the female Zardas. <clears throat> no. <laughs> I mean, I was sober, so maybe. Oh, well, that's probably. Yeah, because cause I've never seen Zardas sober. Why well, so would you? Exactly. <laughs> oh. Oh, maybe uh, maybe I'll get drunk and watch Barbarella. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see see if it's any better. <laughs> Sounds like a big Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I uh, yeah, just highly recommend this movie. Seriously, yeah, it's very well done. Yep. Sometimes you just can't go wrong with an oldie. Yeah, yeah. And and unlike uh. Eh, I was going to say, I'm like, you know, when, back when I was doing the uh, Miss Classics, mm-hmm. you know, usually I walked away from those like, well, it was good, but, you know, right. not great. I, I mean, this is not a movie I've really heard people, like, yeah, that's, like yeah. tout around, you know. Right, it's, nobody it's, ever, like, I'm sure people talks about this too much. I'm sure people like it, but sure, it's not right. like, it's not like, you know, on it's the not a godfather or yeah. the exorcist or anything like that, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah 12 Anger Men. Good pick. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. 1957's finest. Indeed. And, and, uh, I think I mentioned it briefly, uh, last, uh, last week, but, uh, but there is also a made for TV version that has Tony Danza as the Henry Fonda character. I don't know if he's the Henry Fonda character or not. I would watch that. Yeah. Why you not? Know? I mean, at least a minute or two of it. Sure. <laughs> Could be fine. I mean, we, we've talked about this before, Henry, or, uh, Tony Danza's actually proved himself to be quite a, Good yeah. actor, right? Um, yeah. Good movie. Yeah, sweet. Take a break. Yeah. All right. All right. In sugar, in spikes, in neon nights, in walks, in lights, in chains. Golden smoke, hooping hope, gone the sky rush by. Fall back and dark, fall back and dark. I steam stale Jews move broom and pale Little dime store sale Sugar and spikes 
Around my honey Going to see the navy blue vicar Paul Peter and Mrs. Ray Booker trash hello so uh the listener might not be able to tell this but we're actually at your mom's house that's right uh and, and our, our usual telltale sign of that is uh has been very well behaved she so has far. she has i think it's because you know i didn't think about this before uh, uh my mother gave her a couple of these calming pills because there's a thunderstorm okay. going over um, and she doesn't like thunderstorms like sure. like most dogs. Right. We should always just give her the calming pills when we do that. Yeah. I mean, it's not like some sort of drug sedative. It's just like all natural. Right. right. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, she's sedated with these right. hard drugs or something. It's just like natural vet pills. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm down for that. I think uh, maybe it should be part of her regular uh, uh-huh. dietary routine. Just every, every yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast or no. Yep. Yeah, it's like valerian and cam- chamomile and all these things. Yeah. She's been very good so far. Yeah, good yeah. job, Ed. Yeah. So how's it going? It's going all right. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just been working a lot. Uh, worked my day off today. Yeah. Um, working extra hours tomorrow. You always work Monday, though, don't you? Yeah, but I usually work eight hours. I'm working ten hours tomorrow uh, to cover um, funeral of a uh, uh, friend of the family of uh, one of the workers. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to <throat> cover for him. So, yeah, it's working a lot. Yeah. That's all right. I got, I got bills. Sure, sure. I got, I got to get the rest of my grill all uh, right. sparkled out. Right, right. I mean, it's looking pretty good so far. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I know, but with the the bottom half not done yet, it's, right, yeah. it's, I feel so top heavy. Understand. Yeah. And now I know all those girls in high school. Because <laughs> they had the top part of their girls. Exactly. Yeah, I know what you're yeah, yeah. yeah. working, working in a, you know, fast food job on the weekends <laughs> in high school doesn't pay for a full grill real quick. Nope. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Bling don't come cheap. I think that's what you were going to put on your tombstone. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Still plan to. Yeah. Uh, But also I was going to say that, you know, anything worth having is worth working for. That's true. Yeah. (laughs) I like that too. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How are you doing? Hey, you know. (laughs) I'm getting all geared up for free time. I am. I am. Uh, Of course, by the time the listener hears it, it will have already happened. There's no more free comics? No more free comics. Ah. You I mean, waited too long, people. They probably are. You can find them on eBay for <laughs> exorbitant prices. Yeah. We still, well, uh, we still have a bunch of leftover Halloween free comic days yeah. or Halloween comic fest, whatever it's called. Um, we're going to give those out away to well, that's cool. Sabrina and whatnot. Yeah. Because um, oddly enough, on Halloween, no one comes around looking for free stuff. Huh. Which is, it's like kind of the gist of the day. It's somewhat. Yeah. But, but apparently. Well, I guess they're, they're not chocolate comics. So. <laughs> they're, not, yeah. they're not. But I'm sure this Saturday we'll give them all away. Right. 
I was uh, just full of thought about this uh, now, but I got my comic book shipment recently. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I opened the box and, you know, they, they put them all in bags. Uh, but, like, the way it's packaged is that you're always looking at, like, the back cover. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. you know, and uh, so, like, I pick it up and, like, I got confused for a second <laughs> because it was a recreation and but they also give you like uh, every freebie uh that comes out too so i thought maybe it was just that also but it was a recreation of like classic marvel covers but with m&ms m&ms yeah <laughs> like the first first avengers yeah captain america yeah. yeah i was so confused when i saw that i was like what in the I, hell is this yeah it's like the back of a lot of marvel books right now right yeah confused me yeah so much so <laughs> Does it make you want to recreate, like, other classic covers with other candies? No. Like, you know... I mean, what other candy really has any noticeable mascots? Uh, well, Sour Patch Kids has that weird-faced Sour Patch Kid. It's true. It's true. Lemon Heads. <laughs> oh, got the guy. Yeah. You're going to have him, like, on the Action Comics number one. I just... Ah, oh, man. Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> um... Like, you could have the Mole Man with, like, a sea of nerds. Yeah, oh, Instead yeah, of, like, yeah, the yeah. multi... That'd be great. If, uh, you don't watch much television, so you probably have not seen the uh, M&M's commercial featuring Nightcrawler and Storm. I have not. <laughs> no. <laughs> is it animated? Nope. Oh, well. It is advertising uh, both M&M's and the new X-Men movie. Wow. X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm surprised Candy wants to be associated with the Apocalypse. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Nightcrawler just hanging out, and uh, Storm comes in and asks for some uh, M and M's, uh, and Nightcrawler says that uh, he's saving them for a rainy day. I can think. Hopefully, you'll see where the joke is going there. Because she's Storm, yeah, she uh-huh. creates rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Does he teleport at all? No, no. Oh. He's just. Hanging out, using his tail to like hold a teacup. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a <laughs> seems underused. Yeah, he didn't take. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Is it Mars? Who makes him? Is Mars? Mars. Yeah. 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 The God of War. Hmm. Well, that makes sense then. <laughs> the apocalypse. No, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, Geek Fest. Oh, oh yeah, you, uh, you did, did the show. Yeah. yeah, Friday night was. There's a museum here in Dayton called the Boonshaft Museum. Yep, it's like a planetarium and like kids' science related things. It's kind of like a mini cosi, maybe. Kind of, I'd say that. Um, I mean, it's been yeah. decades since I've been there. But. It's pretty neat. <clears throat> um, but they had a yeah something called Geek Fest the second year for it. First time I was there for it, we had a Mavericks table. It was so busy. Yeah. It was like crazy busy. That's yeah. That's weird. We sold so much. Stuff. That's good. It was like a like I'm sure we sold as much there as we did today at Mavericks. Yeah. Right. It was it was amazing. That's so, awesome. So that was fun and yeah. good. Good on the <clears throat> the people at the Boon Shop for putting that on. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I saw a movie uh, yesterday. Went went to a theater. Oh. Yeah. Saw the uh, the movie Keanu. With, uh, Jordan Peele and, uh, Michael Keegan Key, uh, from the, uh, Comedy Central show, uh, Peele and Key and Peele. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's about, uh, a couple of guys who wind up adopting a cat who gets stolen by some drug dealers, and so they have to pose as drug dealers to get the cat back. That could happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was funny. It was, uh, you know, Kind of in the vein of like Pineapple Express, but good. <laughs> <laughs> right. I thought Pineapple Express was watchable. It was watchable, but it was not great. I've never revisited it. No, yeah. I, I saw it. I had a free ticket. I know. Yeah. Because we went. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's the last time I've seen it. Yeah. So, same here. Uh, but yeah, I did not enjoy it. And, you know, people can say, oh, it's because you're not a stoner. Well, you know, no. <laughs> That should not be the reliant factor when you see a movie. Right. Yeah. Like, I was at the time, and I thought it was just all right. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I'm sure that says something. Right. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, well, we've been catching up on some some television programs. Uh, been trying to salvage my hard drives, which all apparently caught on fire inside of my computer. Uh, I guess. Yeah, that's <laughs> dangerous. <and scary. laughs> yeah, uh, last episode, uh, you know. I'm sure the listener knows by now, but the way the show works is, you know, whoever picks the, uh, the movie or comic also picks the musical selection. Sure. And, and so, uh, it was, it was your pick last week and you, you gave me a CD to, to pull a song from and I, I have a hard drive, which, which the song, you know, rips to once, once it copies and I couldn't find it. I was like, well, that's weird. Like, I know I did it. And like, but the entire hard drive was gone. So I was like, oh man, you know, like, I don't know what happened. So I was like, all right, I'll just restart my computer and it'll show back up. Right. It never did. So I had to go out and buy some, some computer equipment. And then Friday night, I, I took it apart and it's like, well, I'm going to fix this, you know, and hopefully salvage what I have. Cause that was the hard drive that also has like all my art files. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just like everything I've worked on in like the last 10 years. Right. <laughs> Don't want to lose that. Right, you know, and then some pictures and stuff like that that I'd still like to keep. Uh, so, <sighs> took apart my computer and started pulling out. I had four hard drives in my computer. I'd forgotten about one of them. But I remember that one of them, like a while back, you know, said that it was corrupt or something like that. So I just disconnected it and was like, I'll fix that later. And then totally forgot about it. Right. Uh, so I'm pulling out my hard drives and, uh, man. They were just like charred wires and like two of the hard drives just had like scorch marks on them. Uh, like stuff was melted. Uh, like ash was like falling out of the computer. That's insane. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like the rest of the computer works fine and like the, the hard drive that has like, you know, the operating system and on that, you know, was working so fine. Yeah, it just happened like that day? No, uh, well. I, I don't know. I think there had been some, some issues with it before, mm-hmm. but, but yeah. it was, you know, when it completely like went away, it was like, Oh man, you know, something happened because right. I've had that happen before with other computers. Man. So yeah, I don't know if it was just cause I was blocking the fan with those hard drives or not, but yeah. All right. So the fan is important. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. not just a luxury. And maybe, you know, uh, I should probably, like, once a month at least open up my computer and just, like, you know, blow out all the dust. Right. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, yeah. So safety tips from gutter trash. Sure, sure. Blow out the dust of your computer. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I've been dealing with that all weekend, but like, I think I've managed to salvage everything, so. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to lose your art and your photos. And no, no, I would uh, at least the art. I would uh, definitely like to keep that. Right. You know, yeah, you know, I'm never gonna do anything with it again. It's nice to have. All right, yeah, you yeah. never know. You never know. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Otherwise, like you know, I'm just still suffering through my depression and have discovered a new angle in which I am just full of rage. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. Well, it's, it's a new bath. Yeah. yeah. It's always exciting. Yeah. I'm still just uh, drawing every day, and, and that's about it. I, I had something exciting happen Ooh. yesterday. I noticed, I looked at our invoices for next week, at Mavericks, and the backordered copy of Charlie Chan Hot Chai is coming in. Nice. So I'm going to get my own copy. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So I'm pretty excited. I guess Diamond finally restocked. So if you listen to that episode and you were like, man, that's too bad. It's out of print. Yeah. It's actually, uh, Diamond has it back. Sweet. So. Awesome. Highly recommended. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of comics yeah. and, and stuff that, that people can buy. Yeah. Uh, I bought, you know, like I said there earlier, I got my shipment of comics in and, uh, and that was a graphic novel that I would like to read and pick as my pick for the next episode. Sweet. I love graphic novels. Yeah. They're my favorite kinds of novels. Yeah, they are. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm thinking about, uh, this one here. It is called uh, The Rattler. Rattler. The Rattler. Yes, by Jason McNamara and Greg Hinkle. Okay. Greg Hinkle did the Airboy yeah. miniseries. Yeah. I am. Not aware of what else 
Jason McNamara has done, but uh, I like yeah. Greg Kinkle's art. Right? Let's read this thing. All right, I'm down. <laughs> All right. I, I really enjoyed his work <clears throat> on Airboy as well. Yeah, me too. He's great. So that's half a review there. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> well, hopefully it wasn't a one-trick pony with the Airboy. I hope never not. Maybe that's true. Maybe this one sucks. It's, it's possible, yeah. I guess. Maybe he just drew the other one with his wrong hand. Exactly. And it just came out great. Or uh, if you've read Airboy, his giant dick. Right? <laughs> it's possible. Uh, but yeah, it's available through our image. Just came out, I believe, last month. So, is it? It's well, it's not a collection. It's like an original graphic. OGN. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Let's just go down to your LCS and get that OGN. Yep. Come back here and uh, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good well, night. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. All right. See you next week, then. Yes. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Gutter Trash.